Hi guys, this is the ELPM S3. It's a redesign of the ESP32 S3 module to achieve extreme low power consumption in deep sleep, up to 1 nanoampere. Before introducing the project, I want to show you the power consumption of this new module. This is the power consumption of the ELPM S3 in deep sleep mode when the external RTC is disabled. As you can see, with this jumper I generate an interrupt to the circuit that controls the power supply of the ESP32. And now with the RTC enabled, the external RTC turn on the module every one minute. And as you can see the LPM wakes up by itself. I will now explain how I got this result but first... sponsored by PCBWay. You can buy your PCBs for only $5, check the link below to place your first order. The ELPM S3 was designed to solve one of the main constraints of the ESP32 module, the power consumption in deep sleep. I know there are my controllers with a very low deep sleep standby power consumption, such as ST Microelectronics and Silicon Labs my controllers. But more and more smart devices are being developed with the ESP32. The reason is very simple, it's easy to use and there is a very wide community behind this platform. So, the ESP32 S3 module is known for its limited power efficiency, and this redesign takes it to a whole new level. By optimizing the power management circuit, we have been able to reduce the power consumption of the module. These energy efficiency improvements give the ESP32 S3 the ability to be used for whole battery power devices and energy harvesting applications. With the LPM S3, users can enjoy the benefits of the extreme low power consumption without sacrificing the performance of the ESP32 S3. But does it really make sense to reduce power consumption so much during the deep sleep? ESP32 S3 is not efficient enough. To answer this question, just compare the battery life of two equivalent smart devices based with the ESP32 S3 and with the LPM S3. To obtain this data, I used my power profiler. So as you can see, the LPM S3 is much more efficient. I set either annual self-discharge value because it depends a lot on the battery use. And I made the same consideration with the safety margin. And now let's take a look at the main features of the module. As you can see from the block diagram, the ELPM can be powered in two ways. The first, by supplying 3.3V to the module. In this way, you directly power the ESP32 S3 and the RGB LED and the RTC. The second way is to supply a voltage between 3 and 5V from the V-in input of the power latch. By providing power, the power latch waits for an interrupt to trigger and power the ESP32 and to all components connected to the 3.3V. The interrupt can be provided by these three inputs. The first one is the master, the second one is the gate for son, then we have wake input, and last but not least by the RTC. To understand in depth how the different interrupt modes work, I suggest you to download the documentation. You can find the link below in the description. Also, in the module is a battery level circuit, you can connect a battery in the VIN input. This circuit has zero leakage current, because it takes the reading only if the ESP32 is powered. So, it's not connected directly to the battery. It sounds like an obvious feature, but trust me, the most development boards and smart product have the battery level circuit always connected to the battery. Since the circuit consists of a voltage divider, you can well understand that this two resistor draws some microampere. Another feature is the status LED under the object's logo. Also, the LED has zero leakage current, so it has no effect on the energy efficiency of the module. Manufacturing in the ELPM S3 would have been challenging without the support of PCBWay, which not only provided me the PCBs but also manufactured the aluminum shields.
An important component of the module is the EMI shield. Why is EMI shielding important? Essentially to protect the module from external electromagnetic signals and to prevent signals generated by the module from interfering with surrounding components. And why I choose aluminum for the shield? So, aluminum is non-magnetic, it does not interact with electronic devices that are sensitive to magnetic fields. Also, it is relatively inexpensive, making it an affordable solution for EMI shielding. There are other metals and alloys that are used for shield development but have higher production cost for a small batch. One of the most widely used alloys is Mu metal. One advantage of aluminum is much more resistant to external mechanical forces, unlike other alloys. In addition, aluminum is very easy to recycle. The only limitation is that very complex to solder with tin and you need to use a specific flux. I solved this problem with the interlocking system. Before we start the test comparing ESP32S3 and the ELPMS3, we needed to consider a few things. First, to test the ESP32S3, I used the official dev kit, but removing all those components that would be influence the measurement. So, I removed the LDO, the serial bridge, and also the RGB LED, because they are connected to the 3.3V. But the RGB LED is present in the ELPM because it does not influence the power consumption in deep sleep. From my point of view, this optimization is very useful. I have performed several tests on the ELPM S3, the first test is a simple comparison of wake up by interrupt of the ELPM S3 and the esp 3 s 3 The differences are mainly the power consumption in deep sleep, which you already know, and the startup time, which is longer by a few milliseconds in the ELPM S3 module. It's the right compromise to achieve very low power consumption. It's possible to reduce the startup time of the esp 32 s 3 boot, so it's possible to achieve a better result. This test is similar to the first one, only the wake up is automatic because it's controlled by RTC. In this test, I show how it's possible to program the RTC to wake up the module every one minute, and at the same time it's possible to wake up the module by generating an interrupt in the master input. In general, with LPM S3 you can do any project you usually develop with the ESP32 S3, but with extreme energy efficiency. Since it's a first prototype, I'm very satisfied of the final result. In the description you can find the link to download the documentation of the ELPM S3. My goal is to mass manufacture the ELPM modules, but first guys, what do you think about the ELPM S3? Should I add some other features? Would you use them in your project? And that's it guys, I look forward to your feedback below in the comments. So guys, thank you for watching the video until the end and see you next time.